Welcome everyone to Literature Search Basics. My name is Soraya Layton. I am joined today by my colleague, David Ferris. We are with the Research Medical Library. We are going to cover the first part in a PowerPoint presentation, which is what I will be going over the basics of kind of the terms and get you familiar with the concepts. And then David will do a live demonstration in PubMed. You can follow along as we go, uh, we also have a libguide I'm going to put in the chat box for you to refer um, during today's session or to refer back later on. Before we dive in, I wanted to point out a few different ways how you can reach the library. You can chat with the librarian Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we are online just ready to um, help and answer any question. You can also text the library at this number here. You can book a consultation. So you just fill out a short form and state the time and date that works best for you. And we will Skype or Zoom. And this is really wonderful because you can share your screen so that we are truly on the same page as you and be able to work through the situation. You can also email the library at rml-help at mdanderson.org. For today's class, we are going to go over, as stated here, we're going to talk about formulating a research question, selecting resources to search, creating a search strategy, and evaluating search results. So as I mentioned, it's first going to be the PowerPoint, and um, if it doesn't totally make sense in this, you're going to be able to see it live and how everything flows and connects together in the live demonstration. We will be sending out a follow-up email that will have the link to the guide, the link to the class recording, um, and any questions that might pop up that we'll send additional information to. Let's begin by talking about why we're here. Why are we wanting to search the literature? So a literature search is a systematic search of all relevant literature on a specific topic. The literature search provides evidence to support many academic and clinical functions. The evidence gathered through a literature search can be used to answer a clinical question, write a research or review article, prepare a presentation, write a grant application, and more. To begin, you want to create a research question. And when you're beginning a literature search to create a research question, it's important because it's a question that states your research topic or what you will be trying to answer. This sounds easy, but sometimes can be hard to create. Begin by identifying what you're interested in exploring. What do you want to find or learn? Try writing your topic down as a question. In medicine, we often use a tool called PICO to help in creating a good research question. Question formats are helpful tools to build a question that will create a focused search. PICO is one method used to create a researchable question based on a clinical topic and helps identify four concepts. First is the P, patient, problem, or population. How would you describe your patient? What is the disease or condition you are interested in? I is intervention. What treatment or intervention is being delivered? Next is comparison. Is there an alternative treatment you are considering? And lastly is outcome. How is the effect measured? What am I hoping to accomplish or improve? So PICO is a great tool to help create a starting off point. Sometimes you might not even need all four concepts for your search. Many people find results with the P, patient problem, and I, intervention. David will talk more about this in the live demonstration. Here we have an example question. In children with reoccurring ear infections, do antibiotics compared to no treatment reduce the recurrence rate? Using PICO, let's see if this is a good research question.
So I want y'all to take a moment and see if you can uh, think it through what you would put in for each concept. You can think it in your head or feel free to put it in the chat box of what you think would line up for each concept. It's the same question in children with reoccurring ear infections. Do antibiotics compared to no treatment reduce the recurrence rates? Let's go through it together. For our patient problem, we have children with recurrent ear infections. Our intervention is antibiotics. The comparison is no treatment. And the outcome we're looking for is reduction in reoccurrence rates. Based on your PICO question, you will identify keywords or subject terms to use in database searches. With your research question, you don't want it to be too narrow or too broad. A clearly defined research question will focus your search so that it is more effective and help you identify relevant results. Let's look at this example here. When did the first moon landing occur? This question is too narrow. It can be answered in a specific year. So this is not a good example. For our second question, what is space? It's too broad. You could write a very, very long article about what space is. So this is not going to help you make a clearly defined research question. When you're ready to select resources to search, you're looking for scholarly literature. And you may hear the terms database and platform used interchangeably, but there is a difference between the two. A database is a collection of files and bibliographic databases such as Medline and Embase are comprised of records with specific types of metadata such as title and author that are used to organize and find articles. Platforms are interfaces that you use to search a database. Just as Google is a platform or search engine for the web, so are the platforms EBSCOhost and Ovid that are used to search databases such as CINAHL and Medline. Databases and platforms are different things. A database can be searched by different platforms and a platform can be connected to and search multiple databases. The Research Medical Library subscribes to over 200 databases. Here on this slide is an example of databases as well as platforms that we have. Today, we'll show you how to search PubMed, the most frequently used biomedical and health sciences platform. When you search PubMed, you are searching the Medline database along with PubMed Central, which is a full text open access database for articles and also Bookshelf, the National Library of Medicine's database for full text open access books and book chapters. I wanna pause here. Are there any questions before we move on to terms? We've gone through a lot already, but feel free to put it in the chat. And if a question pops up later on, go ahead and put it in the chat and we can always uh, go back to the beginning. But I'm not seeing anything, so I'm gonna move on to terms. There are two types of terms you'll want to include in your search strategy, keywords and subject headings. Keywords are terms you select to describe your topic. They are the words you typically think of when you think of a concept. For example, ear infections or antibiotics. Subject headings are also called controlled vocabulary or thesaurus terms are words or phrases that are selected by subject experts to represent concepts. For example, medical subject heading or MESH term 
for ear infections is otitis, and the MESH term for antibiotics is antibacterial agents. Once you have a list of keywords or, and subject headings, you can begin to create your search strategy. Databases use the Boolean operators and, or, and not to connect terms and concepts to create a search string. The Boolean and is usually used to join different concepts together. The Boolean and tells the database to retrieve only those records that have both terms, which focuses your search and retrieves fewer results. The Boolean or is used between terms in the same concept. For example, ear infection or otitis or ear inflammation. The Boolean or tells the database to retrieve records that have any of the terms in the search string. So it expands your search and increases the number of your search results. The Boolean not is used to exclude terms. For example, you want to search for literature about antibiotics. But you also want to exclude everything that also includes probiotics. So antibiotics, not probiotics, will retrieve records that include antibiotics, but will omit any record that includes probiotics, even if it has the keyword antibiotics. Although the Boolean not can be helpful to narrow a search, it is used sparingly because it can leave out results that may be relevant to your topic. Searching the literature is non-linear. You'll continue to go back and modify your search strategy as you examine the search results. Think of finding literature as a treasure hunt. You'll use several features available in the search platform to discover articles that are relevant to your research. First, consider using quotation marks with phrases. When you use quotes with a phrase, it tells the database to search for your phrase exactly as you entered it. The database will not try to map your phrase to subject headings and synonyms. Another way to enhance your strat search strategy is to use field tags to tell the database which text fields to search for your terms. The main text fields you'll want to search are title, abstract, and keyword fields. We've put those on the left side of the screen. Different databases use different syntax for field tag searching, so be sure to check the help section of the research resource site. Finally, use the search filters available in the database. They filter your results according to the ones you select. Most databases include filters for the date, language, type of publication, age group, and full text availability. In addition, some databases include unique filters such as peer-reviewed articles and highly cited papers. Any questions on filters or anything that I have covered so far? Next up will be the live demonstration with David and he'll be able to bring all of these concepts together by showing you a search in PubMed. Okay, I don't see anything in the chat, um, so I am going to hand it over. Thanks, Soraya. I'm going to share my screen. As Soraya mentioned, there are three things to remember when searching databases. The terms, subject headings, and keywords to represent your concepts or your topics. Using the Boolean operators properly when combining terms and concepts. And then once you have a list of results, you can use filters, fill tags, and additional features to refine and focus your results. So we are going to search PubMed today, and you can get to it a couple of ways. Go to our website, our homepage, and you can hover over, find information, and click on databases. 
that will take you to our databases web page and you'll see we've got it divided by core databases databases by subject category and a complete alphabetical list of databases and pubmed is listed under one of our core databases also you you can scroll down on the home page to search pubmed and click there First, I want to share a very useful feature in PubMed. It's highlighting, and this feature will highlight your search terms and the terms they match to in the search results. This is really helpful when reviewing the search results because you can see at a glance which results may be more relevant to your topic based on the amount of highlighting. To turn this feature on, log into your NCBI account or create a new one. It is a free account. Soraya is going to share our FAQ for creating an NCBI account if you need some instructions for that. You can see I've already logged in right here, my username. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click on account settings. Now let's scroll down the page to the bottom, the NCBI site preferences and click on this link. And right here under common preferences is highlighting. You can see that I've already turned mine on, but if you click on it, you can select any of these colors. You can just select bold to have your search terms highlighted and then select your color and then save. And so now we are ready to search PubMed. From here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the drop down menu under resources, uh, hover over literature and click on PubMed. And so I'm back to the PubMed homepage. And the reason why we wanted to share searching uh, PubMed is because it's a very user search platform because it works like a typical search engine, um, like Google. You enter a couple of uh, keywords in the search box and you let PubMed uh, go find the results by mapping your keywords and your subject headings and synonyms. Then, you know, we're going to look at a relevant article or two to help us decide if we need to refine our search strategy. If we find a relevant article, we can use that record to gather additional information that would be helpful to refining our search strategy. If there are too many search results or if there's not enough literature within, say, the first 20 to 30 results, then we may go, want to go ahead and refine our search strategy. To begin, let's use our question about children with ear infections treated with antibiotics mentioned earlier as our topic. So when you start searching for literature, as Soraya mentioned, it's best to start with one or two concepts, usually the P and the I. Searching for these two concepts um, often retrieves literature that is relevant to your topic without the need to uh, add additional PICO concepts. Um, also, also, you may not have a comparison. And just a little pro tip, outcomes are, can be difficult to search because the terms used to describe them are often vague and not included in the title or abstract fields. So let's start with our P concept, children with ear infections. First, notice that our P concept has both a population and a problem children and ear infections. Let's use these terms in PubMed and see what happens. I'm going to type in children, ear infections. Make sure I spelled it correctly. I'm not going to use a Boolean operator because it's not necessary to use Boolean operators in PubMed when you're searching with a few terms. You let PubMed identify your concepts and match your terms to potentially relevant subject headings and synonyms. Also, another pro tip, I prefer to search each of the PICO concepts separately and then use the PubMed Advanced Search Builder to combine the concepts because it can be kind of tricky to create a search string where you've got the proper Boolean operators joining the proper terms and the pro using parentheses to group the, the concepts together we can use the advanced search builder to do that. And I'm going to demonstrate that. Let's search for our keywords and see what happens.
Okay, excellent. Notice first that my highlighted PubMed has highlighted my keywords and also synonyms that it has found. Also notice we have 19,831 results. That's an awful lot. But what I want to show you and something that's so cool about PubMed that Google does not do is that PubMed allows you to pull the curtain back and find out what is it searching? How did it come up with these nearly 20,000 results? So let's get to the um, PubMed Advanced Search Builder page by clicking on Advanced below the search box. That takes us to the Advanced Search Builder page. And let's scroll down to see the history and search details. So we can see our first search, our terms. And if we click on the little arrow under the details column, this shows us basically two things. The complete search string that PubMed used to pull back, to retrieve these results for this, these words. But I like to look at the translation section first because I want to see if PubMed understood what I meant. And in this instance, PubMed did understand that I'm looking for two distinct concepts, children and ear infections. So now let's look at each search string for the concepts. I want to point out a few things. So first, we're going to see a term in between quotes, and then we're going to see some words in between square brackets. So what is this? So anytime you see square brackets and terms in, enclosed in square brackets, that is a field tag. So that means PubMed searched for child in the mesh terms. It actually found the mesh term for children and, and said, I'm going to search for records that have been indexed with the child mesh term. It also decided to search for our keyword, which was children, but also additional synonyms. And what it did is we can see what field or fields it searched by looking here, and it searched our keywords and synonyms in all of the searchable text fields. So we noticed that child, children, child's and children's possessive plural, children's and child plural. What we can do is uh, we can kind of finesse this search strategy where we use fewer keywords at first, maybe just to focus in our results. I mean, we've got nearly 20,000 results and we haven't even added in our antibiotic concept, the intervention, but let's go ahead and just clean this up a little bit. Let's look at our ear infections so we can see the mesh term for otitis. Uh, for ear infection is otitis. We can also see that PubMed decided to search our subject heading otitis in all of the searchable fields. Um, let's skip this little bit for now. Um, that's something that PubMed does. And we noticed that PubMed did actually search our phrase in all fields. Now, something that PubMed automatically does when you search a phrase and you don't put it in, and you don't use uh, quotation marks, is PubMed will break your phrase up and search for each term individually in all the records. So here, this says search for records that have ear and infection, but not necessarily as a phrase. So we could get back results that are talking about ears and infections, but not necessarily a specific type of infection, which we want, which is ear infection. So when I clean this up a bit, I'm going to actually delete this part because I don't want to break up my phrase. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and copy in the complete search string and paste it into the query box. You can expand it a little bit from this uh, down, the uh, right down corner. And so I'm going to go through one by one. I do want child, but I'm going to change instead of all fields. Let's say I just want to search, uh, make it a more focused search. I just want to search the title and abstract field. So I can change this to the title abstract field code, which is T-I-A-B. Um, I also want to keep children. And let's go ahead and change that to our title abstract field as well. I'm going to go ahead and delete 
all these additional synonyms. So I'm going to go ahead and find the Boolean operator that's joining my two concepts. That's and right here. And I know because of it's uh, between two parentheses right here. And I'm going to put my cursor right inside that parentheses and go right up to the keyword that I want to keep. Press delete. And so I'm not messing with what this is called is nesting these parentheses. I don't want to mess with that. I want PubMed. I mean, think of it. It's like algebra. We're telling PubMed search for this phrase, then search for this phrase and then join them together. We don't want to think about math right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my ear infection concept. I want the search, uh, the subject heading, the mesh term. I'm going to change otitis to title abstract. I'm going to go ahead and delete this little bit right here where it says search for our phrase, but as individual distinct terms my space back in and I'm going to change my phrase uh, to title abstract. And so I have cleaned up my my population, uh, my patient population problem concept to where it's a little cleaner. I'm searching for fewer keywords and I'm searching in um, specific fields. So let's go ahead and search and see what happens. Remember, we have almost uh, 20,000 results. Let's see what we get. In theory, we should get fewer results. And in fact, we do. We get 18,000. So about what? A little over 2,000 less. Still a lot. We're not going to go through these. Um, we can see that our search terms are being highlighted. That's great. Now I'm going to search for my intervention. And I'm going to do it the same way I did my population problem. Just going to type in antibiotics. As you have noticed, uh, PubMed, just like Google, will do some uh, uh, suggested keywords. Um, so if it pops up, just select on that. OK, I notice, wow, almost a million results. I see antibiotics as being uh, highlighted. I also see agents and other terms, uh, bacterial. So let's see what PubMed did. Click on the advanced to get to our advanced search builder. Scroll down. And let's look at the details of the intervention concept. Okay, well, we're seeing our mesh term. We're seeing all fields, but we're also seeing this interesting thing. This is pharmacological action. This is another search field. But in our case, I don't want to search that particular field. I really want to keep it simple at first and just search subject headings and keywords. And as we see, it matched the subject heading for antibiotics, which is antibacterial agents. Thank you, PubMed. And again, since uh, it found the subject heading, it's also going to search the subject heading as a keyword. And because it's a phrase, antibacterial agents, PubMed decided to go ahead and break the two words apart and search them as individual terms. We don't like that. We're going to get rid of that. We noticed that it did search it as a phrase. That's great. And it searched antibiotic, antibiotics antibiotic space S. So that's kind of curious. I'm not sure why it did that. And antibiotical. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up as well. We know that, you know, antibiotics is one concept. Uh, it and uh, PubMed translated it as one. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy in this search string, paste it in the query box. And first thing first is I'm going to delete the pharmacological action. I don't want that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this little tricky bit where PubMed is searching for terms in a phrase individually. We can you know, keep antibiotic, antibiotics, but I'm going to go ahead and delete these two. I'm going to do my little trick and tell PubMed, don't search all the fields, just search specifically the title field and the abstract field. That will be plenty, I think, since we're getting back almost a million results. And then title abstract and then search. 
And we do, we get 600,000. So a, 300, a little over 300,000 fewer results, still way too many. We're not gonna look through all these results. We see the highlighting, that's great. We're gonna go ahead and go back to our advanced search page builder. And we're gonna take our cleaned up population problem concept right here. And we're gonna click on the ellipses under actions. This is one of the beauties of using the PubMed builder. So we can say, add this concept, this search string to our query, and it does. We don't have to type it in. We don't have to copy it in. And then we go to our uh, cleaned up antibiotic concept, and we click on the ellipses. And because this is a different concept, we want to use the AND Boolean operator. We don't want to use OR or NOT. If we use AND, we're telling the database, we're telling uh, PubMed, go find you know, children and ear infections and antibiotics. I don't want results that have any of the terms. I want results that have all of the terms. So I choose my AND Boolean operator. And notice I don't have to mess with all this double parentheses, this nesting and Boolean. Op I just say, you know, PubMed, do your job. And it does. And notice I get 4,300 results still. When I get this, I'm not going to go through. I'm seeing a lot of highlighting. So if I see a result up near the first 20 or so, I might click on it. But I also might, because it's 4,300 results, I'm going to see if I can't go ahead and filter my results a little bit more by using the filters on the left-hand side of the search results. First thing up is this graphic. This is the uh, publication range. This tells me that the most recent result is published in 2021. The earliest is from 1951. Chances are we're not doing historical medical research, so we're really not interested in results that are maybe older than the last five, 10 years. So I'm going to look for my publication date filter and go ahead and select five years. In PubMed, that drops it down from 4,300 results to about 560 results. I'm also going to say, you know what? I only want English. I don't want foreign language results. So let's just have English and see that drops it down another, what, 50 or so. Still more than I'm going to go through, but I'm willing at this point to go through the first 20, 30 results to see if anything's popping up. And the first thing that pops up of interest to me is antibiotic, children, otitis. This has all three of my terms in the title field. There's a logic between searching specific fields. The more fields you search, like when PubMed us automatically mapped all fields, that's casting a wide net. That's being really comprehensive. The fewer fields you search, the narrower we're, we're focusing, we're refining the search strategy. And if a term is in the title field and the abstract field, the logic is that that means those terms are relevant to what the aboutness, the meaning of that article is. To refine it even further, if our keywords are in the title field, then that's the, the narrowest field to search. And we're seeing all three of our terms, concepts in the title field. So the logic is authors are gonna, the, the words that people use, authors use in their titles are what the article is about. Somebody's not gonna use ear infections to talk about type two diabetes, unless they're talking about ear infections and type two diabetes, in, you know, both of these in concepts, the chances are the logic is they would have included ear infections as well. So that's just a little pro tip. That's why I, this one stood out to me immediately. My three concepts in the title field, I'm seeing a lot of highlighting in my abstract field, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the record. Before we examine the record, I just want to ask, give everyone a chance to catch their breath and ask a question before I share some additional information. Feel free to put it in the chat. If you can unmute yourself, feel free. We're all friends here. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Yes, please. You changed the, I can't remember what you call it, but like the 
it's like a special key phrase. So from all fields to the TIAB for title and abstract. Is there yes. a place where that's documented where we can know, all right, if I want title abstract, what about author and stuff? Like, is there a, a key somewhere for all of that? Absolutely. And I'm happy to show you where to go. So if you click right under the search, you go to user guide. I'm going to right click so it opens it in a new tab so I don't lose my place. This is the PubMed help guide. And this is where all that information lives. Here it is. I should have just used my page navigation. I was going to show you guys this on the record. I should have just showed you here. Search field descriptions and tags. So these are all of the field tags that you can use to search PubMed. They all work. Some are more relevant than others. I shared the main ones, meaning the author field, the title field, and the keyword field in PubMed is called text words. So it's TW. But yes, so go to PubMed help and then go to appendices and it's right up here. Okay, any other questions? Let me check. Oh, how do you identify a seminal study? Okay, we're going to get to that in just a bit. I will be sure to answer that question for you. So let's go back to our record. So this is a relevant result. Um, I'm seeing lots and lots and lots of highlighting. That's great. So as I showed you on the help screen, let's look at our page navigation. And I want to see first mesh terms. I want to know if this article has been indexed with mesh terms. Here's a good thing to remember. A majority of records in PubMed will have subject headings, mesh terms assigned to them, but not everything. So um, that's good to remember because if your article doesn't have the mesh terms, hasn't been assigned, then the reason why it's retrieved and being part of your search results is because you must, it must have keywords that you used. But I like to click on this mesh term to see what other terms were um, assigned. And so I'm seeing the antibacterial agents. I'm seeing child. I'm seeing child preschool. That's interesting. And I'm also seeing otitis media. So what I want to do is sometimes, you know, you have to read this, the definition of these terms. These terms are selected and assigned by subject experts. So it's kind of like our common vocabulary. We have our, car, our, our common jargon that we use every day. We, we know what this word means in this context, but then there's also the dictionary meaning. And that's kind of what the mesh terms is. So let's go ahead and click. Let's click on child preschool. I'm very curious about this one specifically. So you click on it. There's a drop down menu for actions. I'm going to right click on mesh, search in mesh again to keep my place. And Mesh has its own database because there are, I think last time I checked, 30 to 35,000 Mesh terms. So it has to have its own database so we can keep up with it. The first thing to notice is the heading. There it is. Next is right here is the scope note or the definition. So I know child comma preschool is specifically a child between the ages of two and five. So my article must be relevant not only to child, but also child preschool. That's good to know. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more. So whenever you're trying to think of other keywords, you know, the first step is to use the PubMed automatic term mapping feature when we just type in some keywords and see what other synonyms PubMed matches and take some of those that we like. But it's also a good idea to look at the uh, mesh record for, for our relevant subject headings because under within the record is what's called entry terms. Think of this as keywords. This is a good, a good way to expand get additional ideas for synonyms and additional keywords. In this instance, not so much. It's just preschool children. The next thing to notice I want you to pay attention to is right here, this sort of organized uh, multi-level kind of tree. It's what it's called, the mesh tree. And we can actually see, oh, child is our subject heading. The way this is organized is that 
every indention is a narrower category of subject headings. So child preschool is a narrower subject heading of child. And I know this because I'm going to click on child to go to that record. And I see that its definition is six to 12. And so an individual is a narrower range, two to five. Scroll down. We're going to oh, we're going to skip over subheadings. That is a useful tool, but not often because you can eliminate results real quick. I can see my keyword as I you my is children, and I can see that child preschool is a narrower subject heading of child. And here's a pro tip for you: when you search. A sub, um, yeah, a subject heading in PubMed, it automatically searches every narrower subject heading. So I didn't have to tell PubMed, I want people six to 12, but I also want the two to five. PubMed automatically does that. So um, that is something good to look at. Just to give you a real quick example of keywords, let's click on antibacterial agents, right click on search and mesh. I don't lose my place. I know it's the first one. Scroll down. And this is what I'm talking about. Please don't sit at your desk with a blank sheet of paper and a pencil trying to play a word game and come up with. Let's use our given. Let's make PubMed do its job. And it will suggest additional keywords. We might have wanted to include bactericide or this particular phrase if we weren't getting enough result. So that's a good tip also is that use entry terms to generate additional synonyms. So I'm going to go back to my record. And so that's the first tip I want to share with you when you find a relevant result, you click on the record. The next thing is to scroll, you know, of course, read the abstract, but scroll to below it and you will see a section of similar articles. Now, this is another thing I love about looking at a PubMed record for a relevant result because PubMed is saying, oh, if this, if this, if this article is relevant to you, chances are these articles are going to be relevant to you too. And so without ever having to go back to my search string and add in keywords or change search fields or do any of that stuff, I can just very quickly say at a glance, let me see, is this, is this, you know, relevant? If it is, I can click on all, see all similar articles and it'll give me an entire list that I can click on. I just want to point out something that's popping up real quick that you may want to be aware of is anytime a title of an article is in between square brackets, that means that article, the full text is in a foreign language, and that will be right here. This article is in German. So when we see all similar results, Articles not necessarily going to keep our um, filters of English language and the last five years. So that's just a little tip. That's something to, yes. to know about. Yeah. I'm sorry, question? If not, I'll continue, but please feel free. Um, the next thing to look at, and so this is looking kind of sideways. We're looking like, okay, this article is relevant. These are similar articles. They're kind of like adjacent to my topic. I want to look at them. Another thing is I want to look at the cited by. Not every article is going to have a cited by list because cited by means this, our record, our article has been cited by these articles. And so ours is from 2017. So that means that anything listed here is newer than 2017. So if our article had been published in 2021, chances are it may not have had time to be cited. So I'm going to click on this one and say, OK, this looks interesting. I'm seeing again my keyword. So with, you know, just clicking through the record, I'm getting additional relevant results. So I notice here. It's not mesh. That doesn't necessarily mean this article will not be indexed with mesh terms. Because a human being, a subject expert, is manually assigning these terms, it takes time. Records are always pushed over to the PubMed from the publishers. 
And then the uh, National Library of Medicine indexers are, they go through those records that will be assigned MESH terms and then they assign them. So if an article is recent, it may not have subject headings. So that's the reason why you want to use keywords in addition to subject headings. Reason why you want to use subject headings in addition to keywords is because sometimes, you know, language is descriptive. Somebody might be talking about cancer, but not use the word cancer in the title or abstract field that you're searching. They might be talking about tumors or malignancies or leukemia or something else. So that's why you would want to use the subject head, the subject heading for cancer, which is neoplasms, in addition to a wide range of keywords and synonyms for cancer. So that's why you want to include both types of terms. So again, I'm seeing additional similar articles. I'm seeing here references. This is another good thing to check. Not only do you want to look forward, so you want to look at the cited by, you may also want to look at what was cited in this relevant article, and PubMed allows you to do that. So that's another trick without ever having to go back to our um, list of results. Let's go back one. And then having to go to advanced and start changing any of this stuff. Um, a person, a, a, a person had asked about how do we find seminal articles? And that's a great question. In PubMed, PubMed does not have that ability but there are two other databases that do. And I'll give you a real quick little, I'll show it real quickly. I don't wanna to get too far afield, but because the question was asked, those two databases are Scopus and Web of Science. So let's do Web of Science first. Web of Science, Scopus and PubMed are all pretty user-friendly. You don't have to think about subject headings or you know you just type in children uh, ear infections antibiotics i'm just going to throw everything in at once and see what happens i get 786 results that's an awful lot but i have not filtered by date i can do that but one here for quick filters is highly cited papers and review articles, early access, open access. I'm going to click here on highly cited and click refine. Clinical guide, practical guidelines, otitis media with effusions. That might be something I want to look at. The reason why it's coming back as a highly cited is because it has 194 citations. This was published in 2016, and within the last five years, almost 200 papers that have been published since then have cited that. So that's a real quick and dirty way to do it. I'll show you in Scopus. Scopus is not highly cited. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have a cute little icon like that. Let me show you how, what that looks like. We're going to say children, ear infections antibiotics. And again, if, Pub, if Scopus doesn't understand this, then I can always notice here that's this is it's searching the title field, the abstract field, the keyword field. So just like PubMed, it shows you what it's doing. And here it's searching children and ear and infections and antibiotics. I could, you know, go back and tell, Pub, uh, tell Scopus, no, no, I, I don't want every ear and every infection record. I just want those. Please, thanks. And notice how it did that. I have fewer results. And then when I scroll down, it's in. It's called the, where is it? It's called right here, cited by. You can change highly cite, how many cite, and in in, again, where is it located? See results right here, sorry, it's on the sort. Uh, so right now, mine is date newest. I'm gonna go cited by highest. And scroll down. It, organ it lists it by um, citation and I can go through and see which might be the most relevant in this 
if I weren't finding, you know, relevant results within the first 20 or so, then I would go ahead and refine this, I, you know, go ahead and, and dump in my Boolean operators just to tell scope is, you know, just like we did in PubMed. I guess what I want to show you with, with this little demonstration of Web of Science and Scopus, the same concepts that we talked about when searching PubMed are applicable in really any database. It just so happens that Scopus and Web of Science are pretty user friendly. So like even notice here, I put in my Boolean operators between my concepts and I you know, Scopus is so smart, it's still got the same number of document results. I would have to start refining it with my filters based on year. I still have it cited by highest. I could also cite it by relevance and tell Scopus, you do the hard work and tell me what you think is relevant based on my keywords. And here we go. I'm seeing antibiotic children, ear infections. Awesome. So with that, concludes my live demo. I thank you so much for your attention. I know that what we've been going over really is kind of conceptual and, and kind of really two classes in one. You know, how do you formulate a, a research question is a, is a class in itself. And then how do you turn that into search results in a database? So we've got five minutes for questions. I'm going to turn it back over to Soraya so she can wrap us up. Thanks, David. So I just wanted to see if there were any questions here. I have two links for you guys. First is the LibGuide that I've put in the chat at the beginning of class. I'm going to put it here at the end, and as well, it will be in our follow-up email. And if you have your phone handy, you can open up the camera, use the QR code for the class survey, I'm also putting in the link in the chat box. This will be in the email as well. This is helpful to us and you because you can um, request topics for future sessions as well as um, ways to improve. So I am seeing a question in the chat box. Can you please give a brief intro of perhaps the top 10 research databases our library has and how we access them? Yes. David, if you wanted to talk about it, but I can go ahead and pull up where you can find it. So it is on the library website. So just from the homepage, if you hover over find information and then click on databases, these are the, I guess, top 10, about 10 databases that people love to use. And I think we had gone over PubMed, David mentioned Scopus and Web of Science. As Rice said, we've, we subscribed to, I think it's the last time I counted was 235 databases. And so we organized them by core databases. And these are the primary biomedical health science databases you're gonna use. CINAHL is for, it's specifically for nursing and allied health. Cochrane Library is for systematic reviews. Dynamed Plus and UpToDate are kind of like clinical and patient bedside kind of tools. Embase and Medline, Ovid are sort of advanced search uh, the databases that we use when the, the expert searchers do a literature search for faculty and staff. Uh, PsychInfo is for like, if you're looking for information on psychology, for instance, we have databases by subject categories. So if you need some databases on additional databases on nursing or academics or hospital administration, and then we have an A to Z list if you want to go through and see every one that we have. The top, I think, what is it? Uh, there are four times three, that's 12. So the, the top 12 are listed under core databases. Only thing I want to add to that is um, whenever you access a database, be sure to access it from the library website so that you have really the full scope of it and that you'll be able to get also the full text from the library subscriptions. 
thank you, everyone. We know that you guys are so busy. And so we appreciate your taking the time to spend it with us. Thank you again. Have a great day. Everyone stay dry, stay safe. Thanks for attending. Feel free to reach out at any point, contact us. We are here to help.